Do you, do you think Trump do you think that Joe second, Biden is you, cognitively able I, to be president? I, yes or no? Uh, yes, I do. You can check out the neurology report he had earlier this year in February where they said there was no concern, no cognitive disorder. Uh, that's coming from no, an actual no. doctor, actual neurologist. We're all making this to, up. Uh, Everything we see every day, the inability to say one complete sentence. We're all making it up. Uh, I don't know. If you watch his speeches. You should watch his speech he gave in Philly the other day at the church. It was fabulous. It was incredibly Oh, moving. well, okay. Okay. Um, I'll I, tell you what. Okay. Let's watch him. Slurring off a telephone. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. Let's watch it since Harry, wants to see, since Harry wants to see a clip from the church. Let's take a look at what happened in the church. Let us stand together. Oh, at the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. He has no idea what he's doing there, Harry. He doesn't know what day it is. Oh my gosh. It's, it's actually really disturbing to watch Joe Biden in public these days. He doesn't know where he is or what he's doing. He's the president of the United States. You know, we're now told he has to go to bed, you know, early. He can't be up, you know, working past four o'clock in the afternoon because he's too elderly and infirm. He's the president of the United States. He's the leader of the free world. This is a sick joke, literally, because the man is unfit mentally and physically to do the job. You know that, Harry. Hey guys, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel, Mindset Politics. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing this clip from Pierce Morgan, where he has Dave Rubin and Harry Sensen on. They're going back and forth about the state of the president and can he serve another four years and the reason why i want to do this video is because i want us to look at what cognitive bias really looks like i want you to be able to see someone who is just unwilling to be open-minded to see the other side of a conversation or a talking point and so that's what we're going to dive into today but before we do that you already know what to do like share and subscribe Play the video. You, you played a clip of the man sitting there. Does does either Crystal or Dave look like they're out of it? No, they're just sitting there, just looking at the camera, just like Joe Biden is just sitting there. He wasn't doing anything. You're trying to frame an innocent video and give a, a nefarious explanation for it. Come on, Pierce, let's be honest about this. Let's be honest about this. There was a neurology report in February where he was cleared by an actual doctor, an actual neurologist, and that's what we should be focusing on. Not these like weird selective clips that conservatives, not saying you, Pierce, but conservatives push on social media. Okay, so obviously he's going to try to use what the White House has been using, which is the cheap fakes, right? Yeah, the videos you guys are seeing, it's not really reality. Uh, it's been altered. It's been edited. And so that's why the president looks the way that he does, or that's why you see the president the way that you see them. And it's all a bunch of gaslighting. What's funny about this whole clip, by the way, which I'll link it in the description, you know, you have other people on this panel and none of them are actually hardcore Donald Trump supporters, okay? Um, they're pretty much grounded in their own way of seeing things, and they even agree with this idea that he's not really fit to be the president of the, of the United States, uh, especially for another four years. And what's interesting about that is if you're not fit to be the president for the next four years, you're not fit to be the president now. That's, that's the crazy part about this conversation. But this guy, Harry, he's not going to see it this way. All right, let me, that's, let me bring that's in. just complete nonsense. That's utter nonsense. You know, Dave, it's weird Dave, to be so young and, 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 and so sold out for the system. I got to tell you, it's really bizarre. Everyone knows you too, that Dave. the man cannot say one complete sentence off the top of his head without slurring. The teleprompter reading is horrible. And even, even in the Joe Scarborough and Stephanopoulos interviews post-debate, they were both probably worse than the debate. So the people trying to help him right now are actually making it worse by letting him speak. Let me bring in... Yeah, uh... <laughs> Such a great point, right? So when people are enabling... An individual when they see uh, a person who's compromised this could be someone who has an addiction someone who's just not on their a game one of the worst mistakes the person can make right a friend a family member a supporter a coach a teammate is to not hold them accountable you know a true friend is someone that will pull you to the side and say hey man what's what's going on here right and, and because if you don't get that type of point of view on your behavior, you can't see it, right? So the president, he can't really see his behavior because he's in the glass jar, so to speak. 
and we're outside of the glass jar so we can see inside from a different point of view what's going on. And I'm sure he has a thousand people trying to tell him, do this, do that, do that. And there's a reason why he is the president, right? He's going to do what he wants to do ultimately. But image is everything in America. Image is everything worldwide. I mean, you ask yourself, do you want somebody who's out there dealing with the dangers that exist in the rest of the world, right? Because what what, what are they saying? They're saying that uh, Putin is the worst thing. I mean, he's pretty much the devil, right? You've got North Korea. You have China. This is who we're sending into the negotiation room? This is who we are? Come on. Come on, guys. Let's let's really think about that. Come on. But Harry, he he's not he's not going to see it that way because, you know, he's look at he has a sweater on. I mean, just <laughs> this. He's so funny. He's so funny. Uh, let me let's let's go back and play this clip here. I would say one thing I would just say to Harry is, listen, I'm not in the cult. I already wasn't voting for Joe Biden because of the genocide in Gaza. I'm voting for Dr. Jill Stein. However, there were things that I liked about his domestic that. policy that I support, right? So, Harry, if you love the Biden policies, don't you want a candidate that can actually talk about those policies, that can actually run on those policies and win? Because right now mm. it's incredibly clear Biden is literally the weakest Democrat that you could possibly put up. And also, by the way, I'm sure that you're the type that thinks that Donald Trump getting reelected is dangerous, as I do. And it's an existential threat. You have no credibility to say those things anymore because you are sacrificing the chance to beat him to this cult of personality that you clearly have bought into. Yeah, she makes such a great point, you know, to, to really just reduce it down to the ridiculous, right? It's you guys for the last four years have been telling the American people that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. I mean, that is probably you're pretty much calling him a terrorist, right? I mean, that is a heavy claim. It's one thing to just say he's evil. He's a liar. You know, he's he's a crooked uh, person. You know, you could say those things. But when you start saying someone is a threat to the country. Right. As as are you implying that the FBI has to watch this person and investigate them like like that is a heavy claim. Right. And so when you're spending the last four years saying that to people and then we get on the debate stage, this is who you guys are propping up to beat him. If everything they're saying is true, you guys had the last four years to put the right candidate in front of the American people, a candidate that was surely going to be able to beat Donald Trump, and they did not do that, and now it's blowing up in their face. Oh, Crystal, come on now. you got to be voting for Joe Biden. I mean, when, when Donald Trump, if he wins and points a bunch of extreme justices, I'm sure you'll be upset at that vote at that point. No, Joe Biden Listen, has incumbency advantage. Listen, I personally have a moral seven. red line when it comes to genocide, okay? Call me crazy, but I do have a well, litmus test on that. There's and then, no and then when, and then when you, Donald you Trump is targeting journalists Stein, and like Democrats throwing in jail, too. calling it an official hey, act, I'm sure you'll have hey, Dave, no problem. Hey, how are you, Dave? I'm so, Harry, if you think that Donald Trump, there, if you think on. Donald Trump is going to lock you up and throw you in jail, wouldn't you want a candidate who could make that case, who could win? Because Joe well, Biden well, is behind that is the polls of. Look, she had the best take on this whole clip. I mean, go and watch this for yourself because that's exactly my point. That's her point. And I think that's a lot of people's point. I mean, listen, you guys come out here. You guys are using fear based uh, rhetoric and you're using the heaviest claim possible. You're pretty much saying he's everything short of a terrorist to this country. Right. And this is who you are using. Right. You're using Joe Biden to go out there and beat him. But Joe Biden is not that guy. He's not that guy. You, you too, Crystal. Crystal is coming for you as well. He's going to call him an official act, Crystal. He's coming That's for you as well. That's why I worry. want Biden to get out of the race so the Democrats well, have that, a better well, chance to should... win. Yeah, I, I, I got to cut it again because this is probably, again, another fear-based rhetoric, right? Which is, you know, as soon as he gets in office, he's going to lock up his political opponents. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And what's what I find fascinating is that, number one, um, He's going to be running the country, right? He's going to be focused on that and not locking up his political opponents. Now, I do believe that when someone, if there's evidence of corruption, it should be investigated. Absolutely. But if I was in Donald Trump's shoes, my objective would be turning the country around and undoing what the Democrats have done up to this point. 
and there's been a lot of gaslighting. The economy is good. You know, jobs are going up. Everything is great. That's what they keep saying. But the results are telling another story. So regardless of what they keep saying, the American people feel different and it's showing up in the approval rating. So I am confident that the next administration is going to do whatever they can to get their policies out there to affect change. And whether that works or not, whether they are successful in that or not, it remains to be seen. But to go out there and start talking as if, yeah, when he gets into office, he's basically going to be Putin and he's going to kill his uh, his his uh, political opponents. I mean, it's funny because if he gets into office, Joe Biden is not a political opponent anymore. He's not going to be able to run for office. Right. Like he's going to be too old. <laughs> right. So like what evidence. Right. What evidence do the left have with Donald Trump doing things like that? There's zero evidence of that. But there's plenty of evidence of the Democrats doing it to conservatives. So that might be some food for thought. And maybe you should vote for Joe Biden as opposed to throwing away your I vote would, to somebody who's not going to win. If he wasn't win. doing a genocide, and maybe if there was someone else at the top right, of the ticket in, who wasn't quite okay. so genocidal, I might vote for them. Let me bring in Dave Rubin. This, this is spectacular. A Let Biden voter Dave fighting Rubin. with a Jill Stein voter. Yeah, right. no, this is great. A Biden voter Awful. fighting with yeah, the Jill Stein voter. Yeah, we have open debate on yeah, our side. There is no genocide in Gaza. I can teach you about that another time. Mm. Uh, but this, this is exactly what was oh, going to happen with the Democrats. They created this ridiculous intersectional group of people of radical leftists and socialists and progressives. What are you talking about? If they were radical the leftists, Democrats, I might vote for them. Please. And they were going, they were all going to implode at some point. The, the funny part of what's happening right now. I don't even know what you're you talking the about. The moderate right now, Dave. group, I would say, the moderate Democrats are running cover for a man with dementia that obviously should not be president. Piers, what I'm worried about at the moment is as weak as Biden is, and it's, uh, he's weak literally and elector electorally and figuratively, is that what's going to happen here is if they are able to push him out, if the pressure just becomes too big to bear, that what we're gonna see is overnight, the same media that lied about all of this for four years by not covering his decline, will suddenly bring in Kamala, or whether it's they figure out something with Hillary or Gavin or Gretchen Whitmer or whatever, and overnight you will watch the narrative flip from, oh, we got rid of the old guy and here's Kamala to save democracy from orange oh, wow. Hitler, Donald Trump. And we will see the media do it overnight I guarantee you once they push him out. Yeah, that's a great point. The media is going to switch up and they always do that. I mean, whatever comes out of the media's mouth is never really the truth, right? We, I mean, anybody with critical thinking skills can see that the media is lying up and down about everything on the right, on the left, in the center. It doesn't matter. The, the, the news, it, their whole mission in life is to get clicks, to get views, to get ratings, to make money. And they would sacrifice the truth in order to accomplish that. So anyways, listen, after looking at this clip and seeing Harry's response during this interview, I just find it very funny because obviously he's young, right? He's young. He really believes in whatever he believes in. And kudos to that guy for that, right? The problem is he has limited experience about life. And usually, generally speaking, right, because there's always exceptions, when you're 18, you're more likely to be a liberal. You're more likely to align with those type of policies. But once you're having to pay for a mortgage or own a business or or pay payroll taxes, right, um, or have a family and have to pay the health insurance and things of that nature, you actually start to rethink the policies you assumed were, were great, but they're not really because the outcomes are are finally affecting you. And, and that's what we're seeing in this election year is the people who are going to vote for Biden are usually the individuals who are not really financially impacted by his policies. And you know who that is? That is your grandparents, right? They're not really impacted. People who are well off, they, you know, they're, they have a net worth of at least a million dollars. They've been living in the same home forever. And that home is worth millions of dollars, right? And they have a nice retirement, you know, these individuals are not impacted. Hollywood is not impacted. Celebrities, they're not, imp their money is fine. It's the working class, right? The middle class, okay? And the lower class. These people are feeling 
the pain of those policies. And they are the ones that are saying, hey, you know what? We may not like Trump, but we just do not trust Biden if he's going to be able to serve another four years. I mean, that is the mindset over here. So what is your mindset about this whole interview about Harry's freaking responses? Um, where do you think he's right or where do you think he's wrong? Leave it in the comments section below. Hey, thank you for checking out this video today and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>